Tonight, Jesus invites us to be perfect, just as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Wow, that's a tall order, huh? How can we who are created beings be perfect? When we think of the word perfect, our mind automatically goes to the common understanding of this word in the Western world so as to mean perfect as flawless, impeccable, without sin. So who can attain this kind of perfection? The cultural framework that Jesus lived within was more Hebrew than Greek. And so digging into the language and culture of the time, we learned that for the Hebrew people, the word perfect was associated with the completion of a process of growth. And so in asking us to be perfect, Jesus is asking us to become spiritually mature, to be compassionate as God is compassionate, to be merciful as God is merciful, to be a reflection of God's unconditional love, for God is love. Just as the saints reached this kind of perfection, so can we. So how can we reach this dream that God has for us? Let's look at what Jesus said about his Father's love. He says, the Father's love shines on the bad and the good. God's love does not discriminate. It simply embraces everything. Using the example of the sun, we know that the light of the sun does not just shine on the vegetables in the garden because they're good and refuse to shine on the weeds in the garden because we don't want to see them there. The sun shines on everything, good and bad. This is the amazing truth. God loves us when we are good, and God continues to love us when we've been bad. Consider the parable of the prodigal son. The father in this parable loves both his sons equally, the younger son in his weakness and immaturity, and the older son in his bitterness and anger. The loving care and embrace of the father does not depend upon the son's conversion. He continues to love his sons, even though they have gone astray. He loves them both, even though they are distant from him. God loves, asks us to love in the same way. This is what it means to be spiritually mature, to be perfect, to be the face of mercy and compassion. How can we be compassionate as God is compassionate? How do we let our love shine on the bad as well as the good without saying anything goes? How do we love as God loves and still hold true to who we are, to the values and the virtues that we hold important? We do so by holding our personal and moral ground in humble and loving ways. Even as we let our love and understanding embrace everything. Our example for this kind of spiritual maturity is Jesus. He embraced everyone, sinners and saints alike without ever suggesting that sin and virtue were unimportant. Jesus is teaching us how to attain spiritual maturity by remaining committed to the Lord, especially when everything around us says, fight back, get even, be angry. Jesus is counting on us to bring about real change by acting in the most unexpected ways. And he gives us several examples. 
Consider the example he gives of an eye for an eye. In the process of moral growth within human history, an eye for an eye was actually a step forward. Often when people retaliated for a wrong done to them, they wanted a pound of revenge for an ounce of injury. You see this sometime in children. One child bumps into another and the other one slugs him back. And then a fight breaks out. This rule, an eye for an eye, was put in place to prevent excessive punishment based on revenge and retaliation. Jesus recognized even though that an eye for an eye was not enough because an eye for an eye will leave both people blind. He wants us to realize we're all children of God. And so offering your left cheek when someone strikes you on the right cheek is a call to break the cycle of violence, to hold your ground for what is right. In the time of Jesus, a slap in the face was considered a terrible insult for the Jewish people. It was a very demeaning act. And so by offering your other cheek, you're challenging the person to treat you as an equal, a temple of God's Spirit. You stand your ground for what is true, but not fight back as the other. Then Jesus says, if someone goes to court for your tunic, a tunic being an inner robe like a nightshirt, Jesus says, not only give them that, but give them your cloak, the outer garment as well. Now what's interesting about this action that Jesus is telling us is that the law of the time required a person who has taken the cloak of the other to return it to them every night to return it to the one who now has no cloak so that they can be protected in the night. So to take the cloak back meant that you still had a responsibility to the person without a cloak. With these nightly visits of going back to return it to the person, the hope would be that the other would begin to look into their hearts and have a change of heart when confronted with the humility of one who has lost everything. Then Jesus said, you've heard it heard, the phrase, go a second mile, which means going beyond what is expected of you in an act of kindness. In this example, Jesus was highlighting a regular practice done by the Roman soldiers. The Roman soldiers had the authority to force civilians to carry their 80 to 90 pound pack service for one mile, but only for one mile. Once you fulfilled your mile, you were free to go, your obligation finished. But in carrying the load an extra mile, you were demonstrating to them the quality of a servant's heart sharing more than what was expected of you as an act of generosity, which shows the strength of your heart. God's love is transformative. When we put God's love into action by imitating Jesus, we're rejecting the ways of this world, ways that so often seek revenge, retaliation, arrogance, and the practice of unforgiveness. God loves both the good and the bad. So should we. God forgives sinners. So should we forgive others. God is trustworthy. So should we be people of trust. This is what it means to be perfect, to be spiritually mature, to become a saint. Can we be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect? Yes, we can, with God's help. It's very challenging, 
But God will give you what you need. God will show us the way.